Hey guys, it's Kelly. Hey, I had a request to show you guys how I did the background on the canvas. So here it goes. That is some dress patterns that I got from 1973. And um, I got them for a dollar at an antique store. And it's just tissue paper, works out great. And I decided that it looked pretty cool, but I wanted to stamp it with some text. So I just used my archival ink because I knew I was going to use a lot of um, liquid medium on there. So I used my black archival ink and stamped it all over. Just a couple pieces. And I sped this up really fast because, I mean, it's just stamping tissue paper. So, and then I did another little random piece. Wasn't sure how much I was going to use, but I love how the script, the stamped script looks on the tissue paper. I think it looks great. So after I stamped it, I had already gessoed my uh, canvas, by the way. So, and then I used the regular gel matte medium, and it was way too thick for the brush. It's the first time I've ever used the golden one. So I wound up just using um, like a knife a putty knife type thing to spread it on. It was it was really thick, you know, and again, it was the first time I've ever worked with the Golden brand. I didn't like it, but it was, the gel was a little thicker than I had anticipated. Again, just because I'm, I'm new to it, but I liked it. Um, but I'm used to the more liquid matte medium from Liquitex, so. But it's still good. I just felt like I um, used a little bit more than I wanted, but I made some texture with it too, so it's okay. So I'm just putting it, I put it underneath the tissue paper and then over the tissue paper as well and all along the edges because I wanted it to be nice and uniform around the edges. I wanted it to wrap around to the back so you couldn't see any of the white canvas. And then I put some pieces on there and doubled up and I didn't like how it looked when it was doubled up, so I wound up pulling it back off. and. Um, putting a smaller piece on there and it worked out fine. So when there's no rhyme or reason to it, just randomly slap it down. I mean, it's, you know, you're going to color it with color and you're going to cover it with color and, and paint and all kinds of stuff too, especially when you're doing a canvas. So, but I wasn't sure the direction I was going to use in this, but I'm, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. So, but after I dried my medium, I used my core snail file. It's the fastest, quickest way to just smooth out the little tiny pieces in the on the edges there. So I just did that super quick along the back. You can use any kind of sandpaper if you like. It's, this is just a convenient thing right in my little caddy. So just making sure it's good and dry. And then I got out my gelatos, my metallics, um, and I used mostly metallics on it because I wanted that, I knew it was going to be that picture right there, which, oh, God, I love that little fairy. But I needed some, um, you know, shimmer for fairy dust in the background. So I thought the metallics would work the best. Eventually, I wound up covering up all that color and all that metallic stuff and covering it with something else. But this is the process <laughs> and how it goes. So, and I was pointing out on that gelato just that um, it was a metallic. So it's like pink and some blues and, and you know, I just pulled some of the colors from the picture and some of the colors that would just match the colors in the picture that would complement it well. So and I just rub them in with my finger right over that gel medium finish that's on there. And it smooths out really great. If you haven't used gelatos, they're fantastic. And mine are actually not gelatos, I call them gelatos, but they're gel sticks. They were the much cheaper um, Faber-Castell brand of gelatos because they're not called gelatos. They cost um, significantly less, but it's the exact same project uh, product. Um, but gelatos have different color variations, but you just mix them together and make whatever color you want anyway. So I saved a bunch of money. Um, buying the gel sticks by Faber-Castell Faber instead of the, you know, gelatos. So. so in there I'm just finishing off the edges, I'm just rubbing it with the black gelato and rubbing it in, blending it in with my finger, framing it out. I 
That looks pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. But it doesn't look mystical enough. I like the colors. I like how it's working, but I'm still, hmm, I'm not loving it. So I'm kind of figuring out where I want to go. I'm putting my picture on there, looking at my colors, and just toying with some different ideas. And I wasn't sure where I was going to go with it, but I definitely needed to, I put the picture down just to kind of get a feel for what colors I already laid down and what else I needed. I needed some red because her hair has this gorgeous orangey fiery red to it and um, oh, it's just beautiful and I definitely needed more yellow. So um, I just lay down my picture and just play with it and uh, mess with the colors until I get what I want. It's really hard to mess this up. So, and there, there's where I try some gold metallic and it wanted being um, just kind of darkening it up. It didn't give me the effect I was looking for so it just didn't work with this project. I do love it but it wasn't going with this one. Then I added some white and what I miss in this video, I want to mention it now so I don't forget later, what I miss in this video is um, at the end right before I uh, put the second um, tree tissue paper on there, I actually wound up using a little bit of white gesso and smearing it across the canvas with my finger as I was trying to get some different effects that would go better with my plan of the captured fairy in the birdcage. And I didn't like how that big three was there, it just doesn't go with what I wanted to do. so. Here I'm just showing you real quick that I added quite a bit of more yellow because there's a lot of yellow in there. And then um, this is when I decided to grab some tissue paper. I have the tutorial and exactly how I made that sheet of tissue paper in my videos. And I'll try to remember to put the link in this video too so you can refer to how I made that tissue paper if you want to. But there's the white gesso in there. You might be able to see it. It's just kind of smeared on there. Softens it up pretty nice. So in this, this time, instead of the golden, I go back to my, um, my Liquitex matte medium. It's more like a, like a Mod Podge. And you could use Mod Podge. There's not a darn thing wrong with that. So, and I probably could have, I should have, but I just wanted to try a golden product because I hear so many good things about them. And uh, it was good stuff. So I just put the matte medium down first, put my tissue paper on push it on there and you can start to see the colors come through but here's where the magic happens when you put the medium on top and spread it around you can see all my gelato colors start coming through and the and the tissue paper starts to be really really translucent and it's just gorgeous how that winds up and it's got this real pretty shine to it as well so and that's perfect that's exactly what I wanted that is more captured fairy in a cage in a forest type look that I was looking for. So and I'm just drawing it really well and this definitely shows the colors in the background better than um, the other video I had done when I showed the finished product. But you can see how that white tissue paper, whatever you stamp on there, you'll still have that translucency to it and um, what you've done in the background is still going to shine through because I don't know how many you know mixed media projects I've done where I did this background and it's so pretty and I really like it and then I cover it all up with either paint or some other kind of medium and I lose it but this way you keep all of those beautiful elements in the background that you work so hard to create so love 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 using tissue paper in this kind of medium so there it is there is the background and I'm just messing around with my um, bird cage and then I added, um, I needed some fairy dust, so I put some Perfect Pearl Mist, and it is Heirloom Gold. I sprayed that all over the canvas, and here I am drying it. I dry that really good. And it added a really nice, um, very subtle shimmer to it, and it, it was, it was a, just a great effect for what I was looking for. So, and there it is. You can see the shimmer, the gold shimmer, like fairy dust was just laid all over it 
And there's lots of things on my desk that you probably noticed. There's some, um, you know, keys and some uh, some stuff I got from Fiona and some other um, places that I bought and flowers and all kinds of things. And um, this is just a portion where I was just playing with it and putting on that bracelet that it's a three dollar bracelet I got from Walmart. And I was going to piece it apart, but it wound up going so well around the birdcage that I wrapped it around the birdcage. But I was just playing with different ideas um, to find out where I was going to go, just the creation process as it goes. And uh, messing around with it. And here I'm just showing you how I made that little medallion thing that I put on there. Only part of it. Because there was it was a two-part deal. But So there's some more still pictures of the final... Um, project and I'm so happy with it. I've added something to it. The top portion of the cage on either side at the top, I added some more of that, that trim. I just added that on there um, just this evening because it needed to continue up to the flowers. So I added that and that's the only thing that's changed on that. But Fiona says she loves it so I'm going to get it in the mail this week to her with a bunch of other goodies. But I got a couple requests to see how I created the background and this is how I did it. So thank you so much for watching and let me know if you have any other questions. Thanks.